See that nice green building? It's a bit windy, so I hope you can hear me over the wind noise. There's a nice shiny new green bound. Actually, what happened was it got caught in the fire. And the farmer has very kindly allowed me to take pictures of the steel that came out of the original building. You see that? Look at that beam there. You see it's bent. Now that was just hay bales. See all those purlins, they're all twisted and warped. See how they've cut it out. Look at the curve on the curve, it bent as if like chewing gum. And that one there, all wobbly and warped. You put the camera down, you can see it's all. Now steel has a problem. Very high temperatures, it melts as we know. But what people don't realise, you see there's more fire damage there, is that at much lower than high temperatures, it suffers from a phenomenon called creep, which where it goes a bit like chewing gum, it can sag. I'm going to actually try and set up an experiment myself, but I thought, thought first I'll show you the results of what happens. They've repaired the bow and they've taken out all the damage, the warped steel, and replaced it. Uh, so, but although much of the frame is still original, the thing to remember is that it's a barn. There's no, hardly any structural load on it. These beams would hold up a 10-story building. There's no, so there's no weight on it. The reason why they're so strong is to cope with the wind loading and so on. Well, in a sheltered position, there is no wind loading. So those beams had virtually no load on them. Very, they'd probably been carrying 10% of what they could carry. And yet, in the fire, look at them. Look at that, look at that. Twisted, warped. Two things happen. One, steel goes a bit soggy as it were in a fire. There's another there's wrinkly bit there. The other problem is, it's that it expands and the bits of steel all expand at different rates in fact the same girder that bit might be on the outside that bit might be on the inside if the fire's raging away the fire might hit the inside but not the outside so the two sides of the same girder will expand at different rates causing it to try and go banana shape and of course the result is it ends up all twisted and mangled and bent and all the rest of it and uh, there's one particularly dramatic bent bit I remember seeing on the bound before they repaired it. Bound didn't collapse, by the way, the structure survived, but it wasn't an awful mangly mess. And uh, I'll try to see if I can find any of the other bits of steel that I remember from the actual, uh, from the fire. Um, let's see if I can knit round here. The reason why I'm looking for it is that it was one of the main girders, like those two there but the middle of it has twisted right around 90 degrees. Oh, I can't see it off here. I'm trying to see if I can find it. No, it's not here. It's, uh, might be buried in there somewhere. Oh, that's a pretty dramatic piece there. Yeah, look at that, it's bow shape. Look at that, it's bow shape. This one's a bit curvy too. And the uh, reason why I'm making this little video is I'm just a little bit upset that there are people out there trying to make a name for themselves by claiming that the World Trade Center was blown up by the American government or some other weird oddball crackpot YouTube conspiracy theories. When you see what fire does to steel, you really don't need any convincing that what happened to the Twin Towers was uh, caused by the heat of the fire. Steel just does not like heat. End of story. 